weren't going door to door to deliver mail. You had to go to the post office to get your mail. So that's where you found out about like what was happening in yeah. the community, what was happening in town. Yeah. You know? And so those became pivotal places mm -hmm. um, in, in communities. And so to wow. be honest with you, so even if you look at, you drew a little story here that a lot of people don't know, when you look at our logo, okay. our logo actually is circular and it looks like a stamp. Hmm. And it's actually modeled a little bit after a stamp that you would see from really? the post office. Wow. Because the whole idea, again, is to kind of, those are the two places, again, mm. that people would cultivate, you know, conversation with community and bring people together. So yeah, wow. So it's really more about that. Okay. And then thinking about, okay, what can I, you know, how can I develop that place and what, and so it's, I mm. often say that coffee, we, we kind of cultivate culture and conversation around coffee. Mm, mm, -hmm. yeah, that makes, that makes sense. And what were the three C's again? Culture, community, coffee. Culture, <laughs> community, coffee. There's four <laughs> that's right, that's right. I love that, I love that. All right, welcome everybody to the Speak Your Life podcast. My name is Andre, I'm your host. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether on YouTube, um, whether you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And today we have a special guest. We're here at Urban Grind um, with Cassandra. She is the owner here. Uh, she's amazing. She uh, has so many accomplishments, graduated with a master's degree in uh, business from UGA and has had Urban Grind for uh, many years now. So very successful lady. Thank you, thank you for being here on the podcast. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank so you much. for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So, so quick question: um, How do you feel out of ten? One out of ten. How do I feel? Yeah. Today? Yeah. <laughs> oh, most days, because it's different. Different. So it's today, how are you, how are you feeling out of ten today? Me. Today, right now, I'm doing pretty good. I'm probably eight right now. Okay. If you asked me a little bit earlier, I was probably down to about a six or a five. Yeah, no. Because you know, my days go up and down. The the AC is good. We're good. The summer's out, but yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're nice yeah, and cool in here. And that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, being an entrepreneur, it's a mixed bag. You just never know what you get. And, you know, we had some difficulties with our air conditioner. I went down to about a five. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I was able to get someone in here pretty quickly, and we were able to get it resolved. So yeah, so yeah. We're doing pretty good. Now. That's hey, that's part of business. That's part of like, you know, you go through the ups and downs of like everything. It's just never, it's never a perfect day. That's right. And, and that's okay. Like, you know, you realize that, all right, cool. We, there's a mistake that was made. We just get better, keep moving forward. So, um, anyway. These are unavoidable. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Out of our control, we just had to learn how to like, kind of just go with the flow a little bit and, and just make, make the best of everything that we have. So, that's yeah. Right. No, I, I, I'm glad that you guys were able to kind of go with the flow and here we are now. We're a little late, but that's well, okay. And thank you for your patience. Yeah, that. yeah, and thank you too. So, um, you ready to speak your life? Yes. All right, let's do it, let's do it. So, uh, first question that we have on the podcast that we ask everybody is, you know, the two most important things that Mark Twain talks about is the day you were born and the day you knew why. So, you don't have to give us a day or anything like that. You just, but what about the era, the, the era that you were in uh, growing up and stuff like that, and then that journey to understanding why you were born? Could you hmm. give us that? Interesting. Um, I think that I've always been the kind of person that either helps people or connects people. Yeah. Right. That's really been a part of my life for very for some time. Yeah. Um, I can even think in high school. You know, it was I was just that person, and my mom's like, "You can't take on everyone's problems. You yeah. can't be involved with everything that everyone's doing." And, yeah. You know, and I just found myself being the kind of person that likes to be around people. I like mm -hmm. to listen. I like to help people. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, in any way that I can, because I really feel like you know it's cliche, but they're just saying that you know together the acronym of team is yeah. together everyone achieves more. And I use right. that even with my staff that mm -hmm. really. Um, particularly in our community, I really do believe that it takes a village that we have to work together if we want to be successful, that we just can't do it on our own. We don't yeah. oftentimes come from a position of having um, uh, infrastructure behind us already established, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, where there are some people that come from a legacy of generational wealth or generational businesses and mm. knowledge and things like that. Yeah. So because of that, you know, we do earn, sometimes we have, but those things were destroyed over time, right? That's right. And so we're rebuilding. Yeah. And so because of that, we do have to work together. Mm. And we all have such great unique talents, I think, mm. that we bring to the table. And it's just about identifying what they are and how we can pull them together as a community to help each other accomplish our objectives. I agree. So throughout my life, I found myself in situations 
um, in positions where I felt like I played that role. Yeah. And quite honestly, when I opened up this coffee shop, I really didn't think that I was fulfilling that purpose, hmm. but I found that this was still fulfillment of that same purpose. Yeah. Because more than anything of this being a business, it really has been, again, a place that brings people together, wow. brings the community together, that helps facilitate relationships and, mm -hmm. and connections and things of that nature. So okay. I, I guess in some way that's been my life purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. And, and so, you know, obviously you're an entrepreneur, a very strong entrepreneur here in the Atlanta area. and. Um, you know, everybody, you know, has different backgrounds as far as like where they grew up with and maybe your immediate parents or I don't know what your family, you know, immediate family was, but I was I remember reading something about um, how your great great grandmother, uh, she was a big businesswoman. Uh, she she owned a store. It was like yeah. a community center and like a, a, a it was like a dance hall or something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because that's what I was, you know, kind of referring to a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Is that you know sometimes it is just in your DNA. Yeah. And you know it really hasn't been in my immediate past, right? But mm -hmm. really in my ancestry, it's really entrepreneurship has been in my DNA. And quite honestly, it's probably been in a lot of our DNAs because we yeah. had to do a lot of entrepreneurial things to survive, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. That's right. That's right. And so um, I do come from a community where actually my family was raised on a settlement, and mm, it yeah. was you know uh, my great grand three generations ago, they were like 13 of them and they all had 50 acres and they lived on a settlement. Mm -hmm. And you know, one person on their land, they own the cemetery and the church, mm -hmm. and another person on their land, they own the, the school and, and yeah. on the back of the school was a little floor for the kids to come and dance. That's and right, yeah, and yeah. community center. So there were different things and different aspects that everyone was responsible for mm -hmm. in the community. And so yeah, yeah my great great grandmother owned a store wow. in that yeah. neighborhood. Community, serve our community, but also serve the larger community. So. Yeah, and I heard she wasn't too afraid to, of holding that pistol where oh, yeah. she went to. <laughs> and my great grandmother wasn't either. I mean, yeah. She, she had literally, when she became a certain age, she yeah. had to take her gun from underneath her pillow. That's and crazy. Because we were like, okay, she's at the age now. If somebody, the wrong person comes through the door at the wrong mm -hmm. time at night, she is liable to shoot first and ask questions later. That's right. So. That's right. You never know what happens. You got to be prepared. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's how my grandma was too. So I can relate to that yeah, I, I, you know yeah. countless stories of that's another podcast but right. yeah and yeah, yeah. i don't i don't really like guns but it's funny because i still have the box of my great grandmother's oh, really? bullets and it's like <laughs> bullets, you know, yeah. it's box. <laughs> man that's i mean but hey it's whether it's good bad ugly whatever is still part of your family history okay. so you just embrace it and you know uh it's it's part of the legacy so mm -hmm. Uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's oh, no, nothing I'm, to, I'm quite you know. Proud of that. Yeah, it's very yeah. amusing. That's yeah, yeah. It's kind of like it's funny stories. <laughs> right, you're like, oh, right. I remember it's, my grandma. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what would you say? Uh, you know, because like I would say, like kind of going back a little bit. Uh, for some people who don't know, uh, you guys were established here in 2007, right? Mm -hmm. And that was like kind of like getting on the verge of like the the market crash. Oh my gosh. That, how, how was it like just starting a business during that time? Like, what was it like? What were, what were your thoughts, what were your emotions? What were you going through that time? Yeah, it was very difficult actually because, you know, I was really excited about establishing the business here. Um, yeah. Most of the things that were here in this neighborhood now was not here. So we were mm -hmm. one of the first people to kind of come in. Well, not, well, one of the first people that came in from that okay. perspective. And then, you know, you were really excited about all these hopes and aspirations. And you're right, the market did crash. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was working, I actually had to go back to work full time. Okay, so okay. There was no way, had I not done that, this urban ride wouldn't be here today. Yeah. So, you know, you have to figure out, like, you know, what do I need to do to survive? Mm, you know, mm, and, yeah. and, and how serious are you about that? People think entrepreneurship is easy and it's a game, right? Mm, and mm, it's mm. like, <laughs> it's not. I mean, I remember yeah. there were times that you have to really think about what are you willing to sacrifice and how important is it to you to do that? Yeah. So when there people are out having a good time and doing whatever they need to do, I wasn't here because again, yeah. I started to, I went back to work full time mm. to make sure that I could take care of myself and sustain myself so that I didn't have to take things out of the business so I can continue to nurture it and grow while we were in that crisis. That's right, that's right. Because, you know, I I remember like also reading how, you know, your the, the, the focus and the drive and the ambition that you had and the dedication you had to this uh, shop, to this mission here in Atlanta, I remember reading about how you had the opportunity to go to D.C. during the inauguration of uh, the first black President Obama 
and you were here, you know, taking out the trash while that was going on. Yeah, well, no, it was funny. Yeah. The night of the election. Yeah, yeah. Is what it was. It's okay. the night of the yeah. election, and um, and I was in the working, and I was working by myself that evening. I mm. have staff working, and yeah. just like everyone else that were at the parties and glued to the television, yeah. you know, watching results. <laughs> I really was working in here hard, trying to hurry up and close up so I could get out and at least see the final moments of mm -hmm. the, of, you know, the ballots coming in and things like that. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately, that wasn't my situation. I was in here sweeping floors, and you know, and it said to yeah. me at that moment. And actually, I stopped and paused because this is a pivotal, pivotal moment mm -hmm. in our country it is. where you know a black president was potentially going to be taking office here. And yeah. I'm like, and this is my business, my first business. This is a pivotal moment in my life. Exactly. Too, yeah. You know, and you know, hopefully, and as we move into this next era from mm -hmm. a political perspective, I'm moving into another era too. Mm -hmm. We're together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moving yeah. into a new place in I this agree. country. You know, where I'm a young black woman that's opening the business, mm -hmm. and so you know, it's like kind of a new start for me as well. Yeah, and literally to the point you you talked about what you read was I literally was carrying the trash out of this place, going to the dumpster, and I heard everyone cheering and yeah. stuff, and I stopped and paused, and I was like, Obama must have won. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I think I was like maybe eighth grade going, maybe I was in ninth grade when that happened, but it was. Oh my God, you're dating me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I'll, I say that to say, it's just like, even as a, even as somebody who was very young, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really know much about politics, but it was just cool and an exciting moment mm -hmm. and an inspirational moment at that time. Uh, I didn't really know, you know, I, I didn't really read into Democrat, Republican, all that stuff. I, I just, I was like, Obama won, that's cool. Like mm -hmm. first black president. And just, it gave me that hope, that inspiration to know that, you know, whether you're uh, a young black boy, young black girl, you can really do anything. Like, whether it's starting a business or becoming the first uh, president of the United States. So it's really, you know, it just shows that anything's possible. Um, you've shown that with your business. Mm -hmm. Obama's shown that in, in his, you know, the time in his, he was in the White House. That's right. And uh, it, it's great to see uh, those things that people were just climbing higher and just like not settling just for like the average or not settling for what's just, you know, what, you know, cause it's like you could sit there and say, oh, well, you know, what was me? I'm working this job that I hate, but you could, you know, it's like, that's, you'll have a regret. You, you know, you'll have a regret if you don't take that chance, take that leap. Mm -hmm. You may have those late nights mm -hmm. taking out the trash. You may have those times where everybody else is having a party and you're, right. you're still here working the business because, you know, a lot of times people are working nine to fives, which is fine. That's I, right. I respect that. Uh, it's respectable. But, you know, as business owners, it's, you know, it's not nine to five, it's, it's 24 seven. That's right. You know, so that's exactly right. it's, it's a different, it's a different world. It's so. a totally different world. Yeah. You know? And depending on the day, I sometimes wish I was on one side of the coin and some days yeah. I wish I was on another. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And so um, what, what, what was something that like got you specifically into coffee, like the coffee industry? Because there's so many different avenues that you could have taken. You could have gotten into tech, you could have gotten into even the food industry but you chose coffee what, what made you choose coffee yeah you know it's interesting because I had I was living in New York and I had three different concepts of businesses that I was considering yeah and so to be honest I really thought about okay well you know from a learning curve perspective what can I do because I've never been into in, in this industry at all mm -hmm. right so what from a learning curve would make sense for me yeah and what can I grow from okay. you know and and continue to evolve from yeah um, yeah and then two, just thinking about you know again going back to what I said before um, when I lived in New York, let me back up actually, when I lived in New York, this okay. was kind of like my neighborhood coffee shop. When yeah. I lived in mm -hmm. And so really just establish a place that I felt like I was at home, a okay. place that I wanted to be, That's a right. place that I felt like could, you know, could um, be advantageous to the community and bring community mm -hmm. together and That's help right. to, you know, um, cultivate community, if you will. And so you mm -hmm. oftentimes, if you, you know, we read our website, you read our bios, read yeah. information about us. We talk about coffee culture community mm -hmm. because that's really who we are to be honest with you it really didn't start with coffee mm, you know it really? wasn't like i was such a and if you a lot of people are surprised that it really didn't start with coffee now don't get me wrong we serve amazing coffees and we made sure that we did coffee correctly okay but it started with really thinking about the place it was really about the community it's really about the culture we want to cultivate here and really mm -hmm. about the atmosphere we want to, to have and yeah. the more research i did the more that i read the coffee shop really um 
really encompasses that kind of environment. Really, yeah. you know, if you think about, if you really, if you read historically about the first coffee shops, they were mm -hmm. really places where people in the community came around to talk politics, to talk mm -hmm. about what happened in their neighborhood. That's right. To talk, you know, it was really that place, right? And yeah, so, the intellectual um, like center. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. And then post offices too, really, mm -hmm. because years ago people weren't going door to door to deliver mail. You had to go to the post office to get your mail. So that's where you found out about like what was happening in yeah. the community, what was happening in town. Yeah. You know, and so those became pivotal places mm -hmm. um, in, in communities. And so to wow. be honest with you, so even if you look at, you drew a little story here that a lot of people don't know, when you look at our logo, okay. our logo actually is circular and it looks like a stamp. Hmm. And it's actually modeled a little bit after a stamp that you would see from really? the post office. Wow. Because the whole idea, again, is to kind of, those are the two places, again, mm -hmm. that people would cultivate, you know, conversation with community and bring people together. So yeah, wow. So it's really more about that. Okay. And then thinking about, okay, what can I, you know, how can I develop that place and what, and so it's, I mm. often say that coffee, we, we kind of cultivate culture and conversation around coffee. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes, that makes sense. And what were the three C's again? Culture, community, coffee. Culture, community, coffee. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I love that. I love that. And um, I remember like reading some things about like just the history of coffee and just like um, you know what has come to um, and just like how, if I'm not mistaken, the error is that you know the Arabic word coffee basically means wine mm -hmm. in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like it's mm -hmm. it's like they're completely different things. Like you. You, you can sip a lot of coffee and not get drunk, but right, you know, right, they have right. different outcomes, but uh, right. but you can't overdose on coffee. Yeah. Um, and, and there's so many benefits. There's, you know, people, they say that people live longer, less cardiovascular diseases, and uh, you're, you're less likely to have diabetes, type two, and stuff like, there's so many benefits to drinking coffee, and it's really amazing. Um, I personally, if I, I grew up as a tea person, yeah. Um, so and that's fine too because we have great, amazing little teas. Honestly, oh yes. I've always loved tea and had more of an affinity for tea than I did coffee until I got into yeah. the coffee industry, really. That's and so right. Because of that, we have amazing little teas because I am a, a big tea drinker myself. Okay, okay. We, I was like, hey, there we go, there we go. Um, and so um, for me, I, when I first came in here, I think my first drink that I had was probably the, the, the hot chai latte. Yeah, I knew that you were going to say that. That's our most popular. Yeah. <laughs> people love our chai. We get people to come from across town. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. We're we're making a smoothie, guys, so bear with us. <laughs> it's a little bit loud sometimes with the blender, so yeah. <laughs> we want to forewarn you. That's right. Okay. okay, yeah, okay. we're good? Okay. She just don't want to blend over you. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Um, yeah, so that's how it is, guys. You know, you, you hear the sounds, you, you, you experience the smells, uh, you know, there's different kinds of people in here. There's so many uh, senses that you, you take in when you're here at this coffee shop. And like I said, that chai tea latte hit me, and I was just like, wow, I'm in heaven. So I was just like, um, it's, I, and, I, and, I, and the thing is, like, if I was like, if this place was in, you know, Jonesboro and other places, I don't even, I probably wouldn't even have a Starbucks membership, mm -hmm. honestly. But it's all good. Like, you know, I, 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 it's worth the drive to come out here to the local, supporting the local coffee shops like this one. Um, because and I can appreciate you saying that too. I've got a couple people asking me, when are you going to come down here? When are you yeah. going to come place here? Have you thought about uh, like starting up like different locations? So I am actually, so stay tuned because okay. we are looking at expanding to a second location. You've heard it here first, so stay tuned. Okay. It's going to be a little bit of a broader concept than what we're doing here and something okay. really, really exciting and fun. So awesome. can't let the cat out the bag yet. Okay, okay. Make sure you follow us at Urban yeah. Grind ATL That's or right. our website, <laughs> Urban Grind Atlanta. And Mm -hmm. Make a big announcement, hopefully soon. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that, and uh, we'll, like you know, um, here, like we we also like to talk about how uh, you know there's so many different creative people, and there's so many different things that are going on in the city. Uh, I, I've seen that you also, you guys have, you know, been exposed to like different medias, uh, big medias. Like, it was it like uh, how. No, no, not not Housewives of Atlanta. They've been here too. <laughs> oh, they, the, the Housewives of Atlanta have been here. Okay, because it was like, where are the? It was like you, there was a show on BET that was like filmed here. There's a couple hey, Mary other. Jane. 
Mary Jane, yes, yes, yes. It was like, y'all had a couple of shows. Y'all had like, yeah, we've been yeah, pretty some exposure had, here. Yeah, we've had quite a bit of a, a lot of reality TV shows. Being yeah. Mary, being Mary Jane, I mean, being Mary Jane, that's a television show. Okay. Um, but yes, um, Atlanta Housewives, mm. um, Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, Mary Love and Hip Hop, Madison, yeah. Madison, Queens. Uh, wow. <laughs> we've had quite a few. Back in the day, MTV yeah. May was here. Uh, Oprah was here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her production company and they filmed the show um, yeah so we, yeah we've had quite a few and then you were talking about being mary jane yeah um, yeah yeah Gabrielle Union, and that wow. was exciting we got a chance to meet um mara wow yeah so that was really exciting so are there any of those shows that you frequent like just watching you know on your own time you know um I and if not, that's... Yeah, yeah, well, no, I, you know, well, I'm a fan of Myra. I love her work. Okay, okay. Um, and so that was fun to, to see her work in mm. space, too. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't watch a lot of television. Yeah, you're so busy. So busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's so bad, so busy. It's all but, good. Um, yeah. yeah, so I don't watch a terrible lot of television, but I that's have, okay. you know, obviously when they come and film, then yeah. of course, I, you know, watch some of the episodes and yeah. things like that to see who's on the show and what they're doing and mm -hmm. stay in touch with it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I tend to try to support the people that support me too. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's good. That's good. You know, you don't like when you're when you're so busy here. You, you just you may not have time to watch all the latest movies or all the latest you know shows, and that's okay because I think they'll they'll understand. They'll okay. understand. So, <laughs> but uh, um, how would you say how would you say that here at Urban Grind that you guys differentiate yourselves from like many other coffee shops that are here in Atlanta, like maybe from some things that customers have said or um, what are ways that you guys distinguish yourself? Yeah, I think we've kind of talked about a few of them already where, you know, it's, uh, but I'll just dig a little bit deeper is that I think we're very eclectic, you know, mm -hmm. um, very diverse. We have yeah. a lot of different people coming here from different walks of life. Yeah, you know, yeah. Whether you're a student or an artist or, yeah. you know, an uh, actor or mm -hmm. director or okay. a celebrity, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, or actor turn producer. We had Terry mm -hmm. Vaughn in here that he oh, was wow. directing yeah. one of her movies and they used this as a place. And mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely wonderful person. I was so yeah. grateful to have an opportunity to chat with her and meet with her as well. And, um, you know, so you have so many people, professionals, teachers that work at Georgia State and Georgia Tech, you know, yeah. in the area of parents that are take, dropping off their kids at the ballet school and wow. waiting or, you know, um, so it's just so, old, you know, so always all over the board. Yeah, um, yeah. And because of that, it's really cool because it brings mm -hmm. a lot of people together that wouldn't normally come together. Yeah. Um, which is a lot of fun to me as well. We mm -hmm. meet a lot of people and learn a lot about what people's lives and what they do. We had mm -hmm. a guy that used to come in here all the time that was a diver for the choir. And it's yeah. just fun listening to him about stories about the whales and things that they wow. do around at the aquarium, you know. And that's so, pretty cool. It's really interesting. So I would say that's one of the things that they distinct that differentiates differentiates us from others. Mm -hmm. um, is that it's very open, welcoming, welcome environment, mm -hmm. and all are welcome. Oh yeah. Um, it's yeah. you know it's not to one particular demographic of people, or whatever. Sure. As long as you're about building community and culture and having yeah. conversations with people and opening up your mind and that's you right. Know, that the three it's C's. For you. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so that's one of the things. And I will say, I think our level of customer service, it's sad mm -hmm. to say that that's what distinguishes you, mm -hmm. because customer service should be universal. Yeah. But in my opinion, you just don't receive. I demand good service from people yeah. when I go places, and I expect my staff to get great service. Exactly. So that's one of the things I really pride myself on, is that when people, you know, the best compliment I've ever gotten is people say, oh my God, your people are great, where did you get them from? You yeah. know, or when I read online, people say, oh, the service was great, or this mm -hmm. person was so awesome, or we talk about music with this person. Yeah. And so that's one of the things too. I think that we don't need to just talk about the environment we want to cultivate. We live that through that's our staff right. and through our level of service that we provide. I agree because I, I I'm not gonna say the name, but I was at an establishment earlier today, and I don't know. I the food was fine, but the the customer service was just kind of lackluster to be honest. Um, but again, I'm not gonna say the name, but it's just like you know whenever you've been at a place and the customer service is at a high level, whether you're at Urban Grind, Chick Fil A, wherever, and then you go somewhere else, you're just like oh, like you you get so used to it, like it's a regular thing, but Sometimes it's not as common as you would think. Right. Which is so unfortunate. that yeah, that's really unfortunate. So I don't know. Like I keep, I, yeah. I just encourage you guys to keep doing what yeah. you're doing. I mean, I want to so. know. Hey, we appreciate their business. We appreciate them coming in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, provide it's, great service. Yeah, yeah, and so also like you know, there's so many like I don't know. There's so many things that what it like as far as like blacks that are minorities that have like started 
um, businesses, women who start businesses and stuff like that, uh, how would you encourage someone who is maybe of a you know a certain demographic, whether they be you know a woman, young girl, uh, minority, and or maybe a marginalized community of any sort? How would you encourage them to just get started, like you know whether starting a business or something like that? Because we're in Atlanta, right. one of the best cities for you know any uh, minority to, to get started. How would you personally, what are some words of encouragement that you would share? Yeah, and to your point, I think it's really no excuse for you to say like Atlanta. Not to, if it's something you're really passionate about, not to pursue it, if you're serious. Yeah. Right? If you don't pursue it, and then you're not serious about it. And that's okay too, just yeah. be honest with yourself. That's true. Right? Because yeah. the reason I say that is because you can, what my advice would be, and this is what I did as well, is learn as much as you can prior to getting into it. Because people want to, you know, yeah. add water and stir. And I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Mm. You know, and you know, somebody yeah. told me when I got into business, it was easy, everybody be doing it. That's true. <laughs> you know? That's true. And that's, no, that's, and it's, and it's that's just facts. the fact of the matter. And it's yeah. not easy. So you need to go in the places. I've had people come in and ask me, hey, I'm thinking about opening up a coffee shop. Would you have a conversation with me? And then I'll do that. But then people that I say, are you, if you're really serious about it, then work with me on a project. Okay. Right? You know, invest some, you know, put some skin in the game. Like, that's right. Something, you know, and then that way you have an opportunity to firsthand see what it's really like to really learn something that you can then a tool or something that you could take with you and mm -hmm. implement when you do something to do it yourself. Yeah. But yeah. you really get an opportunity to firsthand see what it's like. Right? Yeah. And I've had people do that. Some people come back and say, oh my God, this is so much different than I thought it was going to be. I don't have the time or capacity for it. I need to get kind of get some ducks in an order before I leave this. Yeah. And some people say, oh my God, this is awesome. I'm ready for the long mission. Right? I want to do wow. this. I want to move forward. But that's what I mean. Like, you have to, that's you have to separate the week from the show. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's how right. serious are you? How committed are you? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to put this, you know, do what it takes to learn? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have to go and learn. Um, and so that's what be my advice. Go find a mentor. Go find a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, volunteer mm -hmm. somewhere. Get yeah. the experience that you need. I worked um, for another coffee shop. Okay. Part time before. Well, actually, it was almost pretty much full time. Okay. Okay. Before I opened for almost a year. Wow. Before I opened up this, you know, and before that, I had um, I actually had my MBA in marketing and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. but I actually went into some to a couple of workshops on how to open up a coffee shop. Really? Because there was different nuances, particularly really about coffee shops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just entrepreneurship wow. really well. So I went to a couple of seminars and workshops and took a couple of classes. And then I worked when I worked for a coffee shop part, yeah. you know, for a while. Now to learn. Wow. And I was like, no, no, they're done. And mm -hmm. I kept a little notebook in my pocket. I talked about what I liked and what I didn't like, what I want to try, what I want to do differently. Yeah. You know, so what are you willing to do now? If you're not willing to go and work somewhere, then you need to hire those people that are experienced. Which hire the consultants, hire people that can share that information with you. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out what do you have? What are you missing? Yeah. Whatever you're missing, you go get it. Either you put the work in and get it, or you have to have the resources to secure the, those um, skin sets. Mm, yeah, that's so important. Um, you know, putting skin in the game, uh, having a mentor, having people surround you, and give you the knowledge, the tools, the wisdom to be able to be successful because sometimes, like you said, like people are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who are just investing in it. It's really just, honestly, a hobby. It's not really a business, what they're doing. Uh, and they're not dedicated, uh, whether it be podcasting, starting a coffee shop, starting, I don't know, anything. So that's so true. So I, yeah, that's, I, I really appreciate that. So, um, and you know, as we wrap things up, like, well, like here in this podcast, we talk about if life was like set up like a house, what would be one of the foundational pillars that you would have as one of your, you know, the things that your life, your house is built on? What would be like one thing out of, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, yeah, just, I know we have, we all have like maybe a couple that were like, yeah, these are my foundational, right. but what say, would you say would be like yeah, maybe say, one you know, out of all of those? Right? Yeah, because, maybe a couple uh, it really of is. I mean, I would, hear, I would have to say faith. I think yeah. Big one. You know, faith in yourself, faith in, you know, the process, you know, faith in a higher, you know, being in you that kind of has your back. And yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, you know they, they say if he gives you vision, he'll, then he'll give you provision, right? Mm. So faith in that mm. process. I love that. Um, and so, you know, to do it. Yeah. Poetry, so, poetry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I've been around a lot of poets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've been like, here oh performing. Yeah, open mics. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, 
that's, I would probably say that that's a big pillar, you mm -hmm. know, because if you don't have that, then it's, you know, there's challenging days where you're yeah. like, you know what, I'm throwing my towel in. But I would also say perseverance, perseverance. because, you know, you can have the faith that sometimes things don't manifest when you want them to. Okay. Believe me, I know, so, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, and then, but then when yeah. it, you know, but it does happen when it's supposed to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the perseverance and putting in the work and putting in the time and dedication to making it happen is another big one as well. Wow. Um, wow. That's yeah, beautiful. The yeah, the commitment is so important. Um, and, yes. you know, last question, we have like question of the day. Uh, we just ask a random question, and today's question of the day will be, if you could serve a cup of coffee or tea to anybody in the world, dead or alive, who would be that person? My dad. I lost my dad. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I lost my father, um, and so I would probably, if I could bring him back and have a cup of coffee with him, we'll talk yeah. to him about what I'm doing now, and mm. what I'm thinking about doing, and where I'm going, and yeah. you know, share this experience, share this with him. Uh, that's wow, that's that's hard. That, that's touching my heart right now. Um, but anyways, thank you so much yeah. for just joining us, being a part of this podcast, and uh, thank you all for joining us, and thank you for listening in. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. If you haven't been to Urban Grind, Shameless Plug, please come check us out. That's We're right. at 962 Marietta Street, uh, Marietta Street near Northside Drive, two blocks from Georgia Tech. Yes. Um, please come by. We're seven days a week. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't been here, come back. If That's you right. haven't been here, come check us out. Um, check us out on Urban Grind ATL is our social. Please mm -hmm. share the page, like yep. us, you know, yep, and then subscribe. also check us out on our website at urbangrindatlanta.com. Yep. We've started during a pandemic selling coffee, selling our t-shirts. We have an artist ser series of so stickers. Mm -hmm. uh, we started these new bands. Everybody was asking if we were vaccinated, so we started these fully vaccinated bands. Oh, yeah, so yeah, those yeah. Now too. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. And all those things you can buy on our website as oh, well yeah. as in the store. So please appreciate your support, and uh, thank you so much for being yeah. here and for spreading the word. That's right. And if uh, you're looking for a job out there, they are hiring, right? Yes, are. Uh, so definitely I was looking apply. For superstar That's right. <laughs> a great customer service. Oh, yes. Great. That's number one. You got to have the three C's, too. So make sure you remember that. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. And the last thing we want to say is uh, for all of you who are listening out there and you're, you're here and you've been with us uh, throughout this conversation, there, we want to encourage you guys to not only just listen, but also follow the Instagram page for Urban Grind. It's Urban Grind ATL, and also speak your life, uh, speak your L Y F E. Um, the first two people to do, first two people to do that. You know what? The first four people to do that. You got to follow both pages. They will win a gift card and. A speak your life t-shirt so make sure you do that make sure you follow both pages like i said the first four followers of urban grind and speak your life will win uh when well, we'll have four different you know prizes for all the people so anyways thank you guys so much we'll see you next time love you guys peace keep grinding <laughs>